Hello, YouTubers. Uh, Fives here with another episode. Uh, I guess to be straight to the point, uh, I haven't really thought about this, but why are people? Well, I haven't put a lot of time into thinking about it, but it's a question of why do people hate on noble knights so much? Why are people just going out of their way to badmouth the deck and saying it's terrible? Yes, it has some inconsistencies. No, it is not busted. But, it's not a bad deck. You throw a Sacred King out there with all the equips, you're going to have problems. I don't care who you are. I don't care what deck you run, unless you're running spell uh, the uh, Prophecies, then you have Spellbook of Fate, then it's pretty easy to deal with King right off the bat. But for pretty much every single deck out there, this is not an easy thing to get over, and it's not the only play the deck can make. So, I guess the question of the day, why do people hate on the deck? Uh, I keep hearing, the deck is too expensive. Why, you know, that, like, such a garbage deck should not be so expensive. Which, yeah, a lot of the cards are kind of overpriced, but then again, the rarities? Madrat is... About a 30 or 40 card now. It was only $10 when it first came out, which is kind of a lot. 30 or $40 for it. Uh, should never. It went up to 60 at one point, which it should never have gone to, but that was hype price because, oh, I'm going to try to rip people off. Crap. Which, you know, Madrop being 30 or 40, I think legitly is fair because it is a secret rare and you have to run three. Supply and demand, it's the market we allow these prices. And it's pretty fair price, you know, for what it is. Tour Guys was up to $100 a piece. No, Tour Guy back in his prime at three was 150 each. Everybody had to have it. Everybody had to have this card. Uh, and the only people you heard bitching about its price were the people who couldn't afford it. It's like the people who didn't care. And dropped the money to buy them. Set didn't complain at all. They had them. They were happy. And they were playing them. And so was Dark Arm Dragon. Nobody complained about the price. Their only statement was. I need this card. I need this card. Which I know. There's a difference between Dark Arm, Tour Guide, and Madrot. But. Those are splashable. So that allows their price to be more ridiculously high. Because you can splash them in, um, Tour Guide ain't splashing anything, pretty much. Because she's a whore, she goes in everything. Dark Arm was just the shit when he came out. He was powerful, he was stupid, he was rare in Japan. He got secret over here, because, you know, Kanabi wanted to squeeze us for money. Uh, but it's supply and demand. So I don't understand why people are bitching and complaining. Madra. If you were a fan, you could have got a playset for $10, like, three, two or three years ago. No questions asked. Well, actually, part, yeah, about two or three, about two years ago. Sorry. Uh, Grouse have had cheap as fuck. Maybe three bucks for the Ultimate Rare First Edition? Maybe. Boars? Four dollars a piece, at most. This is the primary card of the deck. This is the second primary monster of the deck. 30 to 40, secret rare. Super rare. Maybe 4 bucks at most for first edition. Maybe if someone's trying to juice you. Uh, Gwayne. There's two versions of him. They're like 2 bucks. Okay, $6. 9. I'm not adding up the math. Screw that. <laughs> I don't feel like it. It's late. But I don't understand why people are complaining about the prices. Drystons are actually the only cards so far that I've really kind of looked at. It's like when he came out, he was fourteen or fifteen dollars when he first came out. Went up to twenty, maybe twenty-five for a short time, but for the longest time he was a twenty-dollar card when he was the only new support card. Now he's fifteen. He's secret rare. You have. 8 to 16, I can't remember, I, was like, I can't remember how many secret rares they have per box, but I know it's a minimum of 8. So you have a 
one in eight chance of pulling a secret rare. No, you have a one in 16 chance of pulling a secret rare, if I remember correctly, because it's not guaranteed a secret rare per box anymore. Or they, or for a time, it wasn't guaranteed to pull a secret rare. Back in the old days, before uh, and just the Yu-Gi-Oh series, before we went into uh, GX series, y there was two secret rares per box. There was only two, and you were guaranteed one or the other. Then eventually, you got to the point where there was more secret rares, so you had a chance of pulling one of whoever. And then it went to a you had the potential to pull a secret rare. It was not guaranteed. Now they increased the rarity like or the chance like thir to thirty percent of pulling a secret rare. So you have about a fifty you have almost a fifty fifty chance of pulling a secret rare out of a box. Furthermore, that's if I if I have all the uh, correct together, if I have all the correct information for today's boxes. So, if there's eight secret rares per box and you have a 50 50 chance, that's a 1 in 16 chance you have of pulling a secret rare. So, 1 in 16 boxes theoretically will have a Dryston in them. That goes from a draw as well, kind of, sort of, mathematically wise. Because I can't remember where they raised the chance of pulling a secret rare by 15 to 30%. So, 1 in 16 boxes. Who have a dry stick. That's a dollars box. So yeah, biggest thing is when you open a box, you have to sell the cards. You have to make a profit. There has to be money cards. So you're going to try to match your supply and demand. It's like you spent a store owner spends about forty to sixty dollars on a box, and if he opens it to sell the singles, so you have to justify your opening of the box. Because if everything in the box was garbage and dry stick is the only money card. You lost money unless you sell it for a maximum price. So I understand the pricings on these cards. And if you can jive up the price, yeah. Dark Arm, that was mandatory at three. Tour Guy was mandatory at three. So not only was that already like a $50 to $60 card, you had to have multiples. That made it even more scarce. Thus, even more packs and boxes had to be open. Thus, more cards and more money. So, yeah. I don't see how people can legitly complain about the prices of the deck. The cards are too expensive. Okay. Madrots went up to 60. That was because of player hype. You don't like the prices? Don't buy the prices. In fact, as a community, we should come together to lower prices. Like, we're not going to pay this. Like, this is a buyer's market. Not a seller's market. A buyer's market. You know. Well, technically, it's more of a seller's market because supply and demand, and I have the product, and you want it, and most people are impatient, but if we're united, we could actually fix this problem. So, yeah, don't understand why people are bitching about the prices. Like, the Noble Arms, the Equip Spells, uh, the most expensive one is Excalibur at two fifty, maybe $3. The rest are cheap. Unless you want to get the Super Rare Galatins or Arthur Duders, then maybe three bucks a piece. That's it. Destiny is two dollars a card. Two dollars at most. You cannot tell me that these. You cannot tell me the equips are overpriced. You cannot tell me Gwen or any of them are overpriced. Except Lady of the Lake. Lady of the Lake is a fifteen to twenty dollar card. It was a forty five dollar. No, it was a forty dollar card when it came out, which is stupid. Because that deck card literally has very little use in the deck. Because don't get me wrong, it's effect when you you can spell summon her from the graveyard, or you can spell summon a normal normal knight from your graveyard to the field. Beautiful, awesome, love it. It's amazing. It's great. But she's not searchable. She's not light, and uh, she's banished after you synchro. Oh, and she can only be used for a warrior synchro summon. Which, I'm okay with the Warrior Synchro Summon. That's fine. They're pretty good targets. But she's banished afterwards. That's where I have the problem. That's what just screws her over completely. You know, it's like, oh, it would be, you know, abusive if you could just spell someone. No, it, it really wouldn't. It, it would allow, it would be a justifiable card to play main deck later. Like, I don't have one. 
yes, I'm going to get a playset because I collect playsets. It's a collector's thing. And uh, I hope to get them for 15 apiece because I think that's a fair price. $15 for a secret rare. There is one in every 18 boxes about. I think $18 or $15 is a very fair price. Trade? Yeah, I'd go 20 because it's a fair price. It's a secret rare and it is what it is. It's the market. Uh, what I. High Lancelin is now a 12 to 15 dollar card. He should have never been 20 bucks. He literally has no use in any other deck except Nova Knights, and he'll never be played past two. You could play three, but that's just silly. It's like the likelihood of you playing three is almost impossible. After you're going through all three in a duel, it's very, very unlikely. You have maybe a 10% chance of that happening. Uh, he's, he's a nice card, which I think he's kind of overhyped. Uh, Sacred King is an ultra rare. He's a five to six dollar card now. Here's ten dollars when he came out. He's five to six now. This isn't a problem. So I don't understand the bitching about the prices. Ex unless there's people who want to build the deck and can't. Because they're like, oh my god, this deck is so pricey and it's not worth it. It's like uh okay. This isn't about how good the deck performs. I mean, granted. If the deck was a tournament winning deck, it would totally get even more expensive. You think all these prices are ridiculous now? If they release a broken card for the deck, like a Roto or something, a Reinforcement Army, which by the way, I'm completely against them getting a Reinforcement Army. For the fact of, that's dumb, that's stupid, that's just too much. And uh, I'm kind of rambling, sorry. I don't think... They need a reinforcement. It'd be nice. It'd be great. It'd be broken. If it's a reinforcement for a spell card, yeah, I can kind of see that. For a straight-up monster, we already have reinforcement. And to add a spell card or something that allows me to pick any Noble Knight in my deck is stupid. It's dumb. It would make Madrot plays almost guaranteed first turn always. Which I think is bad for the deck because once you add that ridiculous level of consistency, more people are going to want to play the deck and it's going to become the new Dragon Rulers. Well, not not Dragon Rulers as in that busted at power E Dragons. The busted ass power E Dragons. But in the way of everybody was like, oh my god, so much consistency. I set up Artorgus turn one. I mean, King plays turn one all day, every day. So, I don't like that. I'm not cool with that. Which, honestly, true, if we ever do get a rein, uh, reinforcement, I think it should be Camelot or Merlin. I think Merlin would be kind of cool as like a little lo low level monster that you can ditch to add a Noble Knight or spell card from your deck to your hand. It's like Noble Arms. I think that would be cool. Or a field spell, Camelot, that gives you some kind of protection or allows you to skip your draw phase to search a card or something. That would be cool. Because, above all else, I don't want a broken card for this deck. I don't need broken cards for this deck. I just need good consistency slash great plays. Which I know that sounds kind of counterproductive. Basically, I don't need this to be ridiculous. I don't need this to become a broken tier I don't need this to be a tier 0 deck. I need this to be tier 1. The formats I want to play in is a tier 1 format where everything has a fair chance to play each other. I don't need tier 0. I don't want that oh my god this is busted. This is clearly the deck to play this format because it beats everything else except itself and it fights each other. I don't need that crap. That's garbage. That's bullshit. It is detrimental to the game and it destroys the actual value the cards hold. Which, ironically enough, the build I've played with and done the best with had been the Rescue Rabbit build with three Artorgas. And I can still say, Lady of Lake sucks. People are like, the only time I have found Lady of Lake plays beneficial has been Rescue Rabbit, Overlay Artorgas, Get Out, uh, what the hell? Levolvel Chain. 
I don't like Revival Chain. Revival Chain is a $30 card. That's overpriced. It's a hidden arsenal and a DT. It's $30 for the hidden arsenal version. Dear God, no. And even then, my first play is to Tat Sing Guinevere to Grave. Then next turn, well, after it's, depending on what the situation is, put Lady Lake on top of the deck, then Guinevere next turn. It's either or. But that was basically the only way I could guarantee to set up a Lady Lake play, where I just send double Lady Lay Lake to the graveyard for Lavable Chain's effect. So, yeah, overall, I don't really care for it. So, yeah. Uh, and people say the deck is garbage. I don't get that. I don't understand why you hate on this deck. Uh, I'm repeating and rambling a lot. I apologize, but uh, finish this up. Why do people feel the deck is overpriced? Why do people feel the need to go out of their way and say it's a garbage deck? Literally, you're not playing today. Why do you feel the need to go out of your way? Why do you feel the need? Why do people feel the need to go out of their way to watch videos about Noble Knights? To comment, the deck is garbage. The deck is incapable of playing. It is tier free at best. The deck is madrot or bust. You can't do anything with the deck. Harpies beats Noble Knights. Harpies do not beat Noble Knights. I have never played a Harpy deck that has beaten my deck. I have never played a Harpy deck that has won. Ever. The closest time I have ever had a Harpy deck nearly defeat me was when they overlaid into that rank 4 little bastard who negates all your face-up cards. Which, I admit, that is an epic card. That card is powerful. That is a very good card for getting rid of of Noble Knights it is the best card to counter Noble Knights. No questions about that. Still did not stop me. He killed my Madraw. Or killed my Sacred King. Came back with Madraw. He attacked with another monster. Mirror Force. I literally, my turn, Lady of Lake went off, reset up my stuff, and raped him. Anyone who dares tell me that Harpies is an amazing deck. And Noble Knights suck. Y you, you have no justification to talk to me anymore. <laughs> I, I, I have no interest in speaking to you anymore. Now don't get me wrong. Harpies are fun. Harpies are nice. But I don't feel that this that is an amazing deck. In any way. Because it's not. It's a nice deck. It has good cards that I can throw out there. But the deck in itself is not that good of a deck. Ugh. <sighs> I feel like I'm going to get chastised for putting down harpies. But you know what? I've literally seen so many posts where people are making the comparison that harpies dominates noble knights. And that should be a sign of how terrible noble knights are. It is pretty disgusting. Ugh. Comment, rate, subscribe. Please give me your opinions on these questions I have posted. I'm sorry that this is a 20 minute video. That's just ridiculous. I'll try to keep this down for future videos. Sorry. Bye.